How's it going everybody? Arya Masudi, Pat Burnham here on the first day of Florida State football practice. We are bludgeoning ahead. We're getting close to Duquesne. It's about to go down inside of Dope Campbell Stadium. Well, it's always great to be back at Florida State on the practice fields, on the game fields, but certainly it's been a long time coming, eight long months before the team got back on the field. But first of all, Aria, welcome. You've always been unofficially a part of the Osceola <laughs> team, but now you're officially on board. Be with us almost on a daily basis, so we're um, glad to have yeah, you. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm so excited, and we've got big news coming from the Osceola here in the next week or so, so stick with us. Uh, Pat, it's sweaty out here, not yes, to fly yes, all around are. us, but... Summer in Tallahassee. We, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a beautiful time of year, but we can't be happier uh, for the start of Florida State football season. It's officially upon us. Coach Norvell, a couple players talked to the media after the game, and we had a chance to be able to observe practice here this afternoon, too. And uh, Pat, when you looked at the Seminole team from where they were a year ago, we talk about communication, we talk about speed. Something Mike Norvell was really impressed with was the speed in which they practice. What does that typically mean from your experience? Well, it means you got some veterans coming back and you got some depth at most of your positions. If you can go through practice, he mentioned it in his post-practice press conference, they were able to be aggressive with the practice plan. Uh, they were not worried about teaching players plays. They were worried, worried on the fundamentals of those plays. They were able to practice faster. Uh, and he actually said it, they're night and day ahead of where they have been in the first practices if you go back the previous two seasons. So uh, he seems very encouraged by what he saw in day one. Uh, and uh, you had to be impressed with uh, some of what you saw from kids as far as what they've done to their bodies in the offseason. Were well, there some names that stood out to you off the bat? Oh, guys, yeah. Guys uh, who flashed well, and ones. listen, this means obviously nothing to right now. It's how it may relate on the field, but you saw a guy like Kalen Deloach who looks like he has trimmed down a little bit leaner. Uh, Kalen's strength is running, so you have to figure he might be quicker uh, with the trimmed down version of himself. Uh, DJ Lundy, we've heard a lot about that yesterday, and Mike said you're not going to rec recognize a kid when you see him, and he is certainly, uh, for lack of a better term, taking uh, gotten rid of some of the baby fat and is a solid kid, uh, and uh, you know he's already a thumper and with strength and stamina, you got to think he's in line to make a huge step this year. Uh, Dennis Briggs, you know, Dennis Briggs last year looked like a defensive end playing defensive tackle. Now it looks like he could play either one. He is more muscular than he was uh, going into last year. Uh, Fabian Lovett looked a little bit leaner to me. Uh, you know, he's got a chance to be a great player. And listen, uh, I don't want to put too much on the kid, but uh, Juan Armella does not look like uh, a average offensive lineman as a true freshman in college. And, uh, you know, Marcus and Douglas, you know, we. You know, when we first saw him, his first practice as a Seminole, we said, well, you know, he might be a biscuit or two from being an offensive tackle. Uh, he de definitively has made the progression more towards looking like a tight end and a kid that, uh, you know, really if, uh, can catch the ball. He's athletic. He was a basketball player. But if he's a guy that can develop and help that tight end position, it'd be fun to see that. But he certainly, those are some of the guys that, at least on the hoof, you can tell have put some work in this offseason. Yeah, without a doubt, and the defense is going to be something I think Florida State relies on yep. this year because of the experience that came back. We got to talk to Tatum Bethune, transfer from UCF, uh, a kid who comes in and it feels like the team has already taken him and is one of yep. his own. It's a guy who's going to lead from day one. What do you expect from Tatum this season? Well, you know, you've got to have some playmakers at linebackers, something that Florida State has struggled with over the last five or six years, to be quite honest with you. And Tatum's got a proven track record. He's played at a high level at UCF. Uh, I think it's been missed from several times. He had a dominating game against Florida in the uh, Tampa Bowl. I can't remember. And Ray J. Outback Bowl, is that what they play there? The Gasparilla. Uh, I think it was the Gasparilla Bowl they played. They changed Florida, names. Because Florida was 6-6. Six and six, Yeah. So they went to the Gasparilla Bowl. So uh, anyway, uh, Tatum is a guy that you would think would bring, uh, be an instant starter, bring instant leadership to your team, and certainly seems to be a guy that can be a difference maker at linebacker, which helps give a kid like DJ Lundy or Steven Dix or any of the other guys that play inside uh, some time to continue to develop because they both had to play very early in their careers. Uh, we, we move from the defense to the offense. Let's talk about the O-line because that's been something I think Coach Norvell has been very proud of, the work that they've done yeah. to improve that unit. Uh, and you look at some of the transfers they brought in, some of the guys that they hope that can grow into yep. uh, what they hope that they can be. Uh, there's more depth than there's ever been. What does that allow them to do in practice? Well, it obviously allows you to, uh, you know, get some depth. You know, they, the one thing that we saw last year and the year before that, if one of the top five went out, FSU's offense was just not as efficient or productive. Uh, obviously, they've got a turn in time from South Carolina, who started 10 or 11 games at South Carolina next year. Uh, looks like he may, will probably compete at the tackle spots. You know, that's a guy that's got uh, some – he's got some scars. He's played college football. Uh, a lot of these other kids are young, the Robert Orr's uh, and the Juan Armellas. Uh, 
they're, they're young and it's, it's going to take them some time to develop so he pl he helps you there with depth uh, and then you're going to have a nice battle at center I think between Caden Lyles and Maurice Smith and then you know I think you're going to see Robert Scott and Dylan Gibbons if they can stay healthy uh, keep their positions and then I think it's wide open uh, on the right side of the line or at least on one of the sides of the line between a Bless Harris, an Emmanuel, a uh, Bryson Estes, uh, Daltrey Richardson, uh, and then of course Darius Washington. So you know you've got some you've got some open spots. So the competition for at least three of the five spots will be heavy through camp. But certainly you had to be encouraged when you saw the amount of bodies that they have to work with, and they feel like they've got some kids that are developing, and they feel like you know they have a chance to get some guys out of the portal that can come in and help right away. Overall, day one, Coach Norvell, very happy with it, and we got a chance to see it, like we said, and guys are flying around. So it's only day one, as Pat mentioned. Uh, we'll talk to more athletes, student athletes, tomorrow. Today we got uh, Robert Cooper as well um, as blanking on the, the linebacker's name. Tatum Bethune Tatum, Tatum. that we just yeah. talked about 30 seconds ago. Brain fart there. Uh, it's feeding time. I'm going to blame the Nats for the brain fart. They're, they're trying to get at us here, so we're going to get out of here uh, and go home. But practice again tomorrow, right back here, same time, same place, and we'll have more coverage here. Keep it with us on the Osceola. That's Pat. I'm Aria. Thanks for watching.